This episode is going to be a follow-up to my last one in which I detailed the buying, staking out, costs involved, and things to think about uh, in getting into the land game. Uh, In this episode, we're going to do the first 24-hour claim on the two plots of land that I staked out last night. We're going to look at what it's brought in so far to give you an idea if you're not in the land game yet and just considering it. And we're also going to do a slight adjustment to the land uh, setup. If this interests you, please stand by. Hey all you splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying thanks for dropping by. I appreciate your time. Uh, If this kind of content interests you, please uh, think about leaving a like and subscribe and passing this video on to those you know will be interested in it. Okay, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and dive in. This is going to be a a much shorter episode than last night, but I thought it might be interesting to some of those uh, out there that are thinking about getting into the Splinterlands land game. Okay, last night in my last episode, uh, I had bought two new plots of land and we went through the buying of the cards and staking out and what was all entailed okay I have one small adjustment to be made but I wanted to uh, do a video and show the first 24 hour claim on those two plots of land to give you an idea of what you can expect Uh, provided the same kind of staking power, etc. Obviously, there are many different variables here. You don't have to do it exactly like I do it. Um, I had several questions come in over uh, since I posted that video, and so I figured I'd just go ahead and jump into it. I am using gold foil um, commons and rares Chaos Le- from Chaos Legion just because they provide a pretty good value uh, price to production point ratio. So that's the reason behind that. Okay, so we are on my production overview you can see that I have a total of 14 different plots spread across three regions. The two plots, the two new plots this week, uh, today that we're interested in mostly are in region one, Veritas. And you can see that I have those two. Um, all of my plots are 100% uh, up and running. They're 100% staked out. Now, you can see in this particular one we're interested in, um, they are um, producing uh, the the land uh, plot that is producing uh, grain is producing a little bit more than 380 grain per hour and I'm only consuming 260 per hour so that leaves me with a little bit of surplus which is where I wanted to be now I wanted to get um, a little bit uh, basically a little bit closer than that because I'm not looking for a huge surplus here what I'm looking for is to edge up my SPS uh, mining um, but still keep it keep the ratio to where I'm making enough grain to pay for both of them so let's go ahead and jump in and you can also see that uh, neither of these lands we staked out is doing research so I'm getting zero research per hour on that one but I am making uh, 0.194 SPS per hour okay so and this is kind of uh, false I have n- I've never claimed them but the last time the person who previously owned them uh, claimed off of those lands was one week ago so as we saw yesterday i was able to immediately get the plots of land up and running because they already had their production uh buildings uh built on them so i was ready to go and that was part of the value why i dove in and bought those so the first thing i want to i do want to make a slight change here and like i just mentioned uh, i do want to edge up my sps mining a little bit so i went ahead and i bought a common totem to throw on this land okay so The first thing you will note though if you haven't been playing the land game is if you make any change on a land on a piece of a plot of land it is going to trigger a harvest so you want to harvest what's on that land first before you make a change whether that's add a title add a totem change cards around what have you you want to go ahead and harvest that before you make a change otherwise it's going to trigger that harvest and you may or may not be um, ready for that especially if you're in a position where you don't make enough uh, grain in that particular region to pay uh, in other words you're going to have to go out and buy some grain before you do the harvest just something to think about okay so let's go ahead and look at this 
Now, normally, uh, whenever I do my claims, I go ahead and I keep track of them on a running spreadsheet, which you'll see here. Um, I'll just keep this up for a minute, but you can see that I added, I usually just keep track of 114 and 133, but now I have uh, a column for one. So um, I am keeping a run, running total totem total, uh, I can speak. Um, but the first thing we are going to do is harvest the grain. Um, so we'll go into my grain production here and we will now usually let me let me step back for a minute usually i go into each region and then i use harvest all okay but in this particular case since i'm going to make a change on one of the plots of land i'm going to do them individually um, but the harvest all is a little bit quicker okay so especially if you have a lot of land compared to what i just have uh, 14. so let's go ahead and harvest the grain and you go into each particular plot and click harvest and then you will see that I have to pay 3875 to feed the workers which automatically comes out of what I'm going to harvest let's go ahead and click through on that my spreadsheet so this is my grain uh, and I also um, always re uh, remove the taxes so I had a total of 10,000 231.795 uh, grain made and um, there was uh, 1,023 taxes paid, 0.18. So I'm keeping track of that. This is just me typing on my spreadsheet. Okay. So next up, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and harvest the SPS that I mined over today or the last 24 hours. Um, and you'll see that I made uh, just over five SPS. So we're going to go ahead and harvest that. And once again, you see that the grain I have to have ready to pay my workers for that plot. Uh, I had a question come in that basically asked, do you have to um, do you have to be quote unquote self-sufficient? In other words, make enough grain to pay off your workers. You don't have to be. You could you totally could, just mine SPS or do research, but you would have to buy your grain off somebody else, which is going to start being a little, uh, a lot easier once the grain market comes online, which it should relatively soon. So we see after taxes that I made 4.71 uh, SPS over the last day. So I'm going to put that into my spreadsheet okay so <clears throat> we're going to go back here and this is the plot that I want to um, modify a little bit so we're going to go into manage note that I just did my harvest so I'm going to add I found that totems have come down in price a little bit just like everything else so I think I've got enough wiggle room there to go ahead and add a totem, a common totem, which is going to give me plus 10% to my SPS. So, so it's going to go ahead and add this common totem I bought for about six, seven dollars, um, and we will save changes and confirm. And you can see that it went from 0.24 per hour to 0.265, which is a little bit more. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump back. Jump back. So we can see that uh, the grain required per hour is 260 and I'm producing 380 currently. So I'm still in a good range and my uh, SPS mining uh, went up a little bit. So that's what I was interested in. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of my harvesting um, but I'm going to cut the video here because my primary point was these two new plots that I had harvested out. So everything's running smoothly, um, and I just wanted to make that small adjustment, which uh, works out fine. Gets me a little bit more SPS for an extra 6 or $7 common totem. I would have went rare, but the rares are like $40, so the difference between 10 and 20%. Um, I went with the cheaper one most of my lands, except there's only one plot out of 14 that has a, a rare totem on it. Um, so it's just it's just once you get your um, your land plots 
staked out, then it's just a it's just a tweaking game, tweaking here and there to get things where you like it. Okay, well, thanks for joining me. This is Bron- this has been Bronze Dragon. And I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. Remember to leave me a like and subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side. Thank you.